Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk Whiskey. I'm Nick here with you as always, and thanks for joining us for episode number 126. So today we've got a local gem, Woodenville Whiskey, and specifically their straight rye whiskey is what we're going to try today. So in looking at the mash bill and looking around, you don't have to go too far because it's actually right on the bottle itself on the back label about the mash bill of this one. And it's 100% rye um, and it's a straight rye. So we know that it's at least two years old, which is always nice. Hasn't been blended with anything else. It's just from the, the Woodenville distillery and they are actually a small craft whiskey creator that is distilling their own spirit unlike some other quote-unquote craft uh, whiskey makers out there they can sort of get away from saying distillers that are sourcing other people's whiskey maturing them and then selling them back to you so um, in terms of full transparency you know and having age statements on things having a little bit higher than the minimum 40% ABV, all those types of things that we like to take into account. Now, um, this was a great um, choice for this week's episode because it fits a lot of criteria. It's it's local. It's actually made locally. Um, the grain is made locally. It's not made in the same place where it's distilled, but it's on the other side of the state on a family farm that uh, what else has it got going for it? It's 45% alcohol by volume, so 90 proof. We like that a lot. And they basically are just really frank about it. Um, they're not, you know, they don't hide anything behind the marketing. You know, it's just two two dudes who are best friends. Um, they've got a lot of help out in the industry from Dave Pickerel, which we know unfortunately passed away um, at a very, pretty young age, um, early 60s, but was just such a huge force behind uh, the likes of Maker's Mark and, and plenty of other um, distilleries that really took off. Um, Whistle Pig was another one, just a lot of great places out there. So they've had some really great mentorship in getting to where they are today, and it's actually pretty popular. They've got some other expressions out there that I haven't tried, but we'll be looking to in the near future. So also, uh, the bottle's really nice. The, the label, it's not overly done. Um, it's got a little bit about, um, well, it says real craft whiskey, which I, I actually like a lot because I think it's a slight jab to those other people who call themselves craft whiskey makers and have gotten a lot of flack from it from people in the industry. Now, handmade in Washington State, that's also really nice. It's just really subtle, um, no embellishments, no crazy marketing games, or ploys. It tells you exactly from grain to glass what you're getting tells you about the maturation process. They take um, some barrels, season them, I believe, for 18 months over in Quincy, Washington. So they got the heat in the summer, the cold in the winter, the snow, the rain, you know, the trees, the birds, the birds in the hole, the hole in the frogs, and all the rest of that song. So well, let's get into it. Um, looking at the color, it's got a slightly orangish color to it, which is interesting that I don't see it on a lot of whiskeys it's not not the same copper that i get in some other uh whiskeys particularly bourbons but with this rye i'm getting really over amber color which is is interesting but the only thing i don't know about this we know it's a minimum of two years but we're not sure exactly how long it's been aged my guess is that it's going to be pretty young or comparatively young um they're going to get a lot of interaction in the barrels having you know them being um, seasoned, aged, and in, in uh, you know, eastern Washington. And I, I think I made a mistake there when I said 18 months. The 18th month is the uh, the seasoning of those barrels in those conditions. So I don't want you to get confused in, oh, it's a straight whiskey, but 18 months um, is obviously less than that. So don't get confused by that. They season the barrels, not maturing the barrels for 18 months. I don't know the actual age. I know it's a minimum of two, obviously. So, anyway, let's go in for the nose. There's just something about whiskeys, particularly rye, that you notice a lot when it's actually a handmade process. It's not a mass-produced, huge quantity, high volume sort of thing. Is You smell sort of the craft essence in it because you get 
something that, well, typically it's usually a little bit younger. So you're getting some more of those, a lot of grape. I noticed a lot of grape in um, tasting some younger whiskeys out there. Definitely overripe grape, a little bit sour on the nose. But definitely some of those staple rye notes. And I've said this before, is when you get a higher percentage of rye in the mash bill, because if it's a rye whiskey, it can be at least 51% rye. On the lower end, you get a little bit more of a bite, more uh, peppercorn, this really uh, spiciness is sort of like uh, tickles your... Uh, throat as it goes down a little, it's like prickly. Um, but when you get a higher uh, percentage of rye in the mash bill, or 100% in the case of the Woodenville rye, what you get is something that's a lot fruitier than you would expect. It's a little bit more exotic fruits. It's not like apples, pears, and, you know, Irish whiskey type palate, but it's uh, more earthy. You get some some dark cherry notes, the grapes, like I mentioned, overripe grapes. Definitely a lot of uh, similar notes to wine. And a little hint of the vanilla that's in there. A touch of cinnamon, but overly powering is the uh, the grape that's in there. So let's go in for a taste. It tastes young and what I mean by that is the mouthfeel, it's not too viscous. Um, it's pretty watery, if you can understand what that means. Um, the aftertaste is not very long. It doesn't linger around. It doesn't have a strong finish, if you will. It's pretty quick. It's almost palate cleansing. Um, and what it does leave behind is a little bit of almost like a, a bubblegum note. In the sense, not that you've been chewing it for three and a half hours, but, you know, when the bubblegum starts to lose its flavor, you get a little hint there, but you got to search for it when you chew on it. That's similar to what I'm getting here in the aftertaste, but with it at 90 proof, you're getting a little bit more meatiness than you would if it were... Um, proofed out a little bit lower. I want to add water to this. Um, if one does, I would say do it very carefully. It's probably a great um, rye to mix in some cocktails if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not, but it's a great sipping whiskey in the sense that it's not overpowering. It's not something that you have to be careful not to take too big of a swig at. It's got a lot of lovely, those cherry notes that I talked about. The grape definitely comes through a little bit. And the cinnamon and vanilla, not so much as it did on the nose. It's also got some, some pine needle notes. A little bit of tobacco smoke you can get in there. Almost like furniture polish-esque, and not that anybody goes out there and, and tastes furniture polish, but you get sort of this like old school retro vibe, and the same time it's young and spry. I guess it it's pretty uh, a telling of the uh, the current you know generation that we have growing up and starting these small businesses and stuff. Of a lot of people trying to stick to like the old traditions and bring some of that back, but bring it up to the modern times, um, which I think it's cool. I always think it's cool. People like hate on it and just, you know, call it hipster or whatever. And that's, that's a nice thing to do to, uh, easily dismiss something and not talk about it or not appreciate it. Um, but it's actually really cool. I think that we're looking to the past for a lot of, um, ideas and things that we create today, because this definitely has that sense. I don't know if that was the intention going into it, They've had some really good mentorship, as I've mentioned before, so they knew what they were doing. It really tastes like, and now that I'm getting to it, it's more maple syrup in nature. I think I did a review a while ago on Dad's Hat, Pennsylvania rye, and they have one that they age in barrels that have maple syrup in it. And this is lending itself a lot to that. It's not the same viscosity, it's not the same syrupy mouthfeel and texture, 
but the essence of the flavor and those types of notes are definitely there. Yeah, it definitely does. It has the same spry pine needle notes to it. The really overly sweet maple syrup. Not the stuff where they add a bunch of crap to it. But if you get legit 100% no BS farm to table, you know, Wi-Fi included maple syrup, you know, it tastes young, spry, fresh, slightly astringent maybe to some people. Um, a little weak, not as thick. Uh, I think they add some like uh, thickening agents to a lot of syrups that are out there, like popular ones. Um, but that's what I'm getting with this whiskey. It's, it's really interesting having grown up in the Northeast and then living out in the Northwest and seeing something like this that was clearly made out here, but tastes sort of uh, similar to the things that I've had on the East Coast. So all in all, really, really great rye. Um, I think it's young. I think it's probably right there on the mark to, you know, be able to call a straight whiskey. I don't know how, or a straight rye, sorry. I'm not sure I didn't look exactly how long they've been around. I don't imagine it's all that long. Um, I can't really see when they were, oh, 2010, it looks like. So I'm not sure, you know, how much stock they have, but I'm going to imagine to get out quantity, with places like that, I know it's 2019, but, you know, nine years isn't really that long. Um, it's it's long for a business to stay around these days. But in terms of whiskey craft making or craft whiskey making, um, it's not. You know, you in order to get profits, you got to have product. So unless you're putting out like a gin or, or flavored whiskey or things like that, to get actual whiskey out to the market, you've got to have it. Um at the the requirements people are looking for and it's got to taste good so there's a there's a balance you got to strike there but anyway that's it for episode number 126 thanks for joining us i hope you'll join us next week for something new if you are traveling for the holidays i hope you have a safe travel to your final destination for family and friends and if you're not spending time with family and friends as i am i hope you enjoy yourself take a break Go out in nature, pour yourself something nice. Let me know if you do. Let me know what you're drinking this holiday season. And we will see you next week as always. If you're going to drink, drink responsibly and see you next time.